being here, I'm reminded of a couple things when I think about, you know, Fenway Park and baseball and statistics and analytics. Uh, is the is a quote from a favorite movie of mine, The Field of Dreams. And there's a scene where uh, Terrence Mann, the character, says, uh, "There's one constant thing over the years, and that's baseball. America." has rolled like a steamroller. The blackboard's been erased, rebuilt and erased again, but baseball is always marked the time. So baseball marking the time and the constancy of baseball is really appropriate here at Fenway Park because this is a place where history has been made in baseball. But again, we have to think about the other part of American history over the last century. 1912, this opened. Okay, that's over 100 years ago. If you think about what it was like 100 years ago, they played baseball here, and the greats played here, all the greats. Babe Ruth, Ted Williams, David Ortiz, Pedro Martinez, Roger Clemens, all played for the Red Sox. And they called this home. This was their home park, okay? But history has marched on. When the ballpark opened up, there was no federal income tax. Women were not guaranteed the right to vote. The Great Wars hadn't happened. And another great event was the Spanish influenza, which followed a few years after the opening of Fenway Park. One to three percent of the world population died because of a virus right after the opening of Fenway Park. History has marched on since the opening here. And that's, that's just part of what baseball and history, American history specifically, uh, are important with them. Historians have always looked to baseball as a way to mark the time, as the constancy through things. And there's a famous quote by the historian from Columbia that to know the heart and mind of America, you better know baseball and its rules and the reality of the game. His name was Jacques Barzan, and he's a very famous quote around baseball also. Okay, so this is the constancy of the game. And if we time traveled, if like we could time travel back to the opening uh, day here at Fenway Park, 108 years ago, things would look the same. We would see the footprint of the field is virtually the same. We would see the pitcher's mound, home plate. There'd be fans in these seats. The grandstand had an overhang. The blue seats grandstand had an overhang. The, the box, field box seats were open to the air like they are now. So all that's very similar, it's the same. But so much has changed too about the game. If you looked at the game itself in 1912, you'd see a lot of the same things. It's essentially the same rules. There's nine players, there's three outs for every half inning, there's nine innings, all that's the same and it's basically the fielders are in the same positions, okay? That, that would look similar. But technology and the advancement of just knowledge and science completely changed some of the things you would see. If you looked at the fielders, you would see their mitts are nothing like today's mitts. This is a modern mitt, this is an infielder's mitt, and this mitt has helped fielders field better than they used to. The old technology, the old mitts were awful. The number of errors in the first game here, there were 10 errors in the first game here between the Red Sox and the New York Highlanders, actually they were called that year was the last year the Yankees were called the Highlanders officially. 1913, they become the Yankees officially. So the game between the Red Sox and the Highlanders, if you looked at the mitts, you would see, you'd see inferior mitts. Fielding has gotten better because of mitt technology. Okay? If you would uh, look at the bats those players used, the bats those players used in 1912 were longer, heavier, and they had thicker handles. Today's bats with the thinner handles, shorter, lighter bats, allow for much better batting performance. Batting performance went up because of bat technology. If you think about the other part here of baseball training, baseball specific training has increased. The skill, the skill development and training of the players today is so much different than the players you would see in 1912. Totally different skill set. Now, these players in 1912 were great baseball players. They, they, you'd see 
uh, some similar plays made. The other key feature that changed since 1912 was the baseball itself. I don't know how many talks you've seen who, and who's talked about the technology of the baseball, but back then, it was the dead ball era. It was called the dead ball era because the ball didn't fly far off the bat. Bat ball contact was really reduced. They used the same baseball throughout the game. And as you mash the ball during the game, it gets softer, mushier, and it doesn't travel as far. So baseball technologies changed the game too. All of these things have improved the performance on the field. Training, ball technology, mitt technology, bat technology. All of that has improved the way we look at baseball players and how well they do on the field. Okay, so that's, the, that's what you wouldn't see. You wouldn't see those players in 1912 have the advantage of the technology that I've just described. Now, beyond the technology, you should, you should sort of see up here is this new press box. The next big technological revolution is, 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 is there's a story here with the press box. Uh, what I would call the next big technological revolution is the money ball revolution, the change in baseball analytics. A lot of you have probably seen Moneyball. Now, a key scene in Moneyball was filmed right up here. It depicted the owner of the Red Sox interviewing the protagonist, Billy Bean, to try to get him to come to the Red Sox. And the interview took place right up here. They filmed it here. I'm not sure John Henry interviewed Billy Bean in the press box, but the movie showed it right up there. And if you go back and watch the movie, you'll see it. Okay, so Moneyball, the Moneyball revolution, this change in baseball analytics, has massively changed the game. It's another example of technology and science. Data science has transformed what we see. I'll give you just one example. Uh, if you watch a lot of baseball now, you'll notice one third, one third of all plays, of all plays by all teams, have shifted fielders. The field is a, fielders are really dynamically moving around. They're moving around pitch by pitch. The count changes and they move somewhere else. The data associated with where to place defenders has just taken off, and it's changed the way the game is played. It's a much better game now. If you're on the defensive side, you're taking advantage of your knowledge of the data you've acquired to place your fielders in the best possible positions. When shifting started in 2010, it only occurred about 2% of all the plays. Imagine that, 2010, eight years ago, 2% of plays were shifted. Today, one third of all plays are shifted. Massive revolution in how the game is played. Okay, from what you see today, just even eight years ago. Big difference, and that's part of what I would call the baseball analytics or money ball revolution. Now when you consider money ball, it leads to the sort of the, I'm trying to understand three major periods of baseball analytics. In the beginning, baseball collected lots and lots of data. They collected data for every player's season, and this was recorded and, and, and housed in the offices of the American League and National League in New York City, and they published records, and there's lots of great records of the season data for these players. Then a lot of analysts came around, and they wanted to measure each event. They, wanted, they had more questions. They were curious, they, wanted, they had research questions. So they started recording event by event to try to understand better things like the value of a stolen base and the value of a walk versus a single or making it out. And this kind of analytics is sort of 20th, I call it the 20th century analytics. It was done and, and, and uh, championed by Bill James. And Bill James was mentioned in that famous scene in the press box between John Henry and Billy Bean. John Henry says something to the effect, I don't know why baseball hasn't hired that guy. The fact is, in real terms, in 2003, John Henry directly hired Bill James to join the Red Sox. So the, the movie depiction is, says one thing, but the, the, actual, the actual outcome was John Henry hired Bill James. Now, Bill James sort of epitomizes this 20th century analytics. Great questions, collecting the data that they can, but that kind of goes to 2005. 2005, six, we have a revolution, and we can sort of see that as we look around the park. 
In 2005, 6 they put in one park, two parks, three parks, the Pitch FX system. Now, the Pitch FX system, you can see a camera over here by the, near the camera well. There's one camera there, there's another camera way out in the center field. And these are high-speed video cameras, and there's one over on, on this side of the, uh, of the field uh, as well. They're trained on the area between the pitcher's mound and home plate. These high-speed video cameras triangulate the position of the ball during the pitch and during the hit right off the bat. And it's, it, it, it changed baseball analytics. Be, you, you go from, <clears throat> excuse me, the Bill James kind of revolution into a modern revolution to better understanding pitching and also better understanding batting. It really changed. The technology of just high-speed video cameras and a little software changed our understanding of the game and changed how the game was played. Now beyond that, just more recently, is something called StatCast. And StatCast is, if you can look over here, there's a, there's a rectangle, a green rectangle, right up here. That's a radar system. If, I don't know if you can see it. It's again to the left of the camera well. That, cam, that radar system is able to pick up the seams on a baseball. In other words, as a baseball is thrown and rotating, the radar can, under, can actually measure the seam, and it measures directly the spin, the spin of the baseball as it's thrown or batted, and anywhere on the field, too. It, not just the pitch to the batter, but also the batted ball, and where the batted ball goes to a fielder, it's where the fielder throws it to the next fielder. All the movement of the baseball is directly recorded by this radar system. Very extensive technology, much more advanced than even the pitch FX video analytics. So now we've got this new technology, radar technology, measuring at the ball everywhere. Now we really have a measurement of the strength of an outfielder's arm. Dwight Evans, back when he played, great right fielder for the Red Sox. Runners didn't run on Dwight Evans because his arm was so good, and some of the gray hairs in the audience, like me, would remember that. But Dwight Evans was a fabulous right fielder with a great arm. With this radar technology, I, we can measure his velocity, how fast he threw. Much more direct measurements, not relying on eyeball observations and conclusions like that. So, the, the, the whole, the flight of the baseball is now being measured directly. The other thing to look at is, right on this camera well, towards us, there's a, uh, a green, an olive green box with three cameras. I don't know if you can see it right here, but it's facing us on this camera well. You go over here, and, and there's three little cameras there. You look on number 12, if you look on section 12 further down, there's another set of three cameras. These cameras, again, are high-speed cameras, but they're, they're trained on all the players on the field. So now we get to measure reaction time. We, we, you, you, the cameras can place any fielder in the right position, and then as the play happens, you can see how fast the players react. You can measure their movements. You can see how fast they're running, specifically. So technology, again, has advanced to see how the players are moving, how the, how the runners are running, how the batters are getting to first. Before, scouts used to rely on this technology, a stopwatch, and they would take they would actually, there's a few key measurements scouts and coaches look for. They look for the time to the plate by the pitcher. It's like when the pitcher lifts his foot during the windup to the time it hits the catcher's mitt. They're always catching that time. The time to plate matters in baseball because when a runner's on base, you can't take a full windup because the, getting a stolen base would be too easy. So time to plate and pop time's another time that scouts would always get, but they do it with stopwatches, okay, with having some amount of error. Now, part of being a good scout was to train yourself to do this correctly, and scouts would train scouts to do it correctly, so they'd be consistently measuring the right time to plate and then the right pop times. But this all related to some information that baseball players need. We have much more precise and objective information like this now through these camera systems. Okay, so technology in the 21st century has changed dramatically the, how the game is played. It's improved the game. 
Just like better bats and gloves and balls have improved the game, just like better training has improved the game, improved the, improved the performance of the players, the 21st century technology has improved the game too. We have better defense, we have better knowledge of what pitchers can achieve in their pitches, we have better knowledge of what batters can do with their, batter, with their swings and how they can perform. All of this is impacting all 30 teams in Major League Baseball now. It's a dramatic shift. It's the 21st century shift in the game. And it's revolutionized things. And if you're a fan, you've, you've seen it. You've heard it talked about. Right now is a time of high strikeouts. And it's a time of high strikeouts because we know so much from pitch FX and StatCast. We know so much about the pitch. That's the first thing that happens on a baseball field of any event is the pitch. And pitchers. Pitchers know how to attack batters' weaknesses much better than they used to. And they're able to perform and train and get pitches right the way they used to. So, as I started with, baseball has this constancy through American history. It really aligns with so much of that history that is our country's history. It's America's game. And you can look at 19th and 20th century technological changes like I talked about, gloves, bats, and other things. You can talk about 20th century analytics and how it changed the game. All of that is true and it, it, mark, it marks time. It marks history. But now we're in a whole new era, a whole new era of technology and a whole new era of baseball history being generated. Baseball truly does mark the time of American history. And I can't think of a better place that represents the constancy, the constancy of baseball through time than this place right here. This place right here has seen the greatest. This place right here has continually had great baseball. It's had the fans and the umpires and everything else around it is, is here, this spot. The constancy of baseball is represented by Fenway Park, in my view, best place ever to represent the constancy of baseball and how baseball is important to understanding who we are, understanding our spirit as people, understanding our intellect and our culture. So that's the big idea. As baseball represents the constancy of American history and culture, technology has moved along with it, and it's been fine. Because technology has moved along with American history, too. We have all representations of technology changing the game, and technology is changing our lives. Baseball is a wonderful, wonderful representation of America, and this is the best place for it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.